Okay, we're back. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. This is the Cube, day two of uh, the Dell, the Dell, the uh, IBM Edge 2012. Um, we're here with Martin Kraus. Not Martin Kraus. I'm sorry, Sebastian Kraus. A little fumble this morning here. Yeah, so, uh, John yeah. MacArthur. <laughs> John uh, MacArthur, Walton John Technology MacArthur, Partners. Uh, Dave Vellante, how are you? Uh, seriously, yeah. so uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, um, appreciate it. <laughs> um, so, uh, you run storage sales globally for IBM. Tell us what's going on in the field right now. What's going on in the field? I mean, uh, it's, yeah. it's one of the most exciting areas in the IT industry right now. I think we can all agree on this one. I think you said it in your introduction here. Um, what is happening in the field is that customers, I think, realize that they have to handle the vast explosion of data and that they need to find a way to get intelligence out of the information and use this to their competitive advantage. So I think everyone up to the C-level suite is in full understanding of the, uh, the outside environment that is happening, how social media and things are coming together, and how they need to basically make sure that they are melting this into their business environment to gain a competitive advantage. And clearly, uh, information um, and, or int intelligence coming out of information is becoming more and more important to all of them. And this is where storage is kicking in. So storage obviously is growing with the big data we've been covering. What do you see as the core customer expectation these days in terms of implementing storage? Because they have to buy more storage and you yeah. guys are a supplier for that. But yeah. you guys are talking about an ecosystem of a solution set around that bringing in other parts of IBM. Um, do the customers really want to have that touch point through storage or the other groups? How do you guys handle that in the field? I think the most important thing that customers want right now are innovative solutions that help them to either have flat budgets or reduce costs. So they are looking for innovation, they are looking for um, reducing the labor that is attached to managing storage um, and making sure that they can deliver competitive advantage. The way we handle it is that as an IBM um, corporation <laughs> we are um, of course providing solutions to the customer from an overall perspective so we are incorporating our solutions out of software group, out of um, the system and technology group and we provide the full solution to the customer. What is the number one thing? Including, by the way, if I, if I may add this, including, of course, the solution that our business partners are providing. So whether this is a service that they are providing and implementation con uh, services or consulting, all of this is uh, basically provided by so our So direct and team. indirect, depending exactly. upon the c engagement. Correct. What's the profile of your, uh, of your partners and how is that changing? You've got a, a lot of different types of partners. That is correct. Um, if you are looking specifically to our partner landscape, and we have more than 6,000 partners worldwide, um, I would say that they, the variety of those partners are, are offering service as well as st storage and software solutions. So they are having a kind of heterogeneous skill set that they bring to the table. But what we also see, and I believe that this is absolutely important to deliver customer value, is that they are specializing around storage solutions and that they are uh, getting more in-depth knowledge about the area of storage and how to provide those do you have part? Do you have partners that are sort of focusing on the big data initiatives and where they can leverage some of IBM's uh, capabilities in that area? Absolutely. Yeah. I think almost every storage partner has to think about how to handle big data and what kind of skill sets they, are need, that they need. So from that perspective, all of them are on that topic and certainly we so provide them with the enablement around that. So are they skilling up on data analytics and are, are, are they actually doing that or, or are they are they then or they sign the contract and then look to you to, to be the provisioning? No, agent? they are actually doing it. I mean it's as always you have different models, right? So sometimes we are providing 80% of the implementation services, yeah. sometimes the, the business partner is doing 80% of those kind of services. But what we are doing from our perspective, we are providing the enablement to the business partners. So we educate them, we skill them, we provide them with tools um, to make them knowledgeable about the topic. So that's kind of the approach that we have taken with the partners, which they appreciate. Yeah. You look for a big investment from your partners in terms of adding skills. Well, I would say without the skills, you cannot deliver competitive advantage um, to your customer and you cannot provide any solution. So it's important that the business partners have that kind of competitive edge to be accepted and uh, by the customers and to make sure that they have this kind of um, relationship that is needed in, in terms of to develop a solution and to deliver a solution. When you think about sort of the big problem sets today, so obviously there's the how do I approach and how's, what's my answer towards you know big data and analytics. And mm -hmm. There's that, there's the I've created this cloud infrastructure and now I'm having difficulty managing it or I've, you know this virtualized infrastructure and I'm having difficulty mm -hmm. managing it so mm -hmm. I need to improve perhaps my storage performance because storage is often getting blamed for 
poor virtualized environment performance. Sometimes it is, sometimes it happens, it's not, yeah. right? But you got to sort. You got to help customers sort that out. And then there's the whole question of how does backup, data protection, archive, disaster recovery change under a new sort of highly virtualized environment? When you think about those three, sort of, what are the, which ones are you hearing the most about, and where do you think IBM's best positioned to sort of win? Um, Honestly speaking, I think yeah. the, the, the <laughs> strengths of our portfolio is that we are equally positioned in all of these three areas. I mean, we have the broadest portfolio in the storage industry by no means, um, that's, that's, a, that's a fact. And from that perspective, we feel pretty positive about um, offering those solutions to our customers, providing the consultancy services. What I'm hearing personally from the customer calls that I'm making is that right now customers are thinking more and more about archiving and uh, backup solutions to, that will help them to also free up budget so that they can invest in more innovative solution on the primary storage side, so to speak. Okay, so so is the in, so on the primary storage is just for for sort of traditional workloads or sort of, or the new workloads that are coming out of both, and definitely okay. both, because the traditional workload is also increasing. Certainly, the new workload in terms of big data and the streams that are coming in um, are providing the next challenge, so to speak, which has to be solved. So what, it's what? a combination of the two. When I was on the customer side, mm -hmm. I found that uh, there was a course of core infrastructure team that managed the applications, and they had, they were the ones that dealt with the 30% mm -hmm. growth, the 20% reduction in budget, right? Mm -hmm. Then there was another group that was responsible for most of the innovation that was happening and driving mm -hmm. the top-line revenue growth on new business initiatives. Uh, and, and they had tended to have sort of more flexibility mm -hmm. in terms of what they acquired, who they worked with, things like mm -hmm. that. How's IBM positioned with that second group? You know, that sort of, the, the cowboys of the business unit, of, of, the, of the corporations? Uh, my, my first comment would be that I think that customers are more and more merging these two groups and that they um, try to ensure that they have a seamless um, transition, so to speak, between the two areas because they are realizing that they have to manage the speed in the business in a different way than they have been able to do it in the past. So from that perspective, okay. it's so almost impossible to separate these groups because you anyhow have to catch up all the time when you're managing those kind of things. Yeah. So tell us about the conversations you have around cloud. Because cloud is uh, obviously the, the transformative around how they're going to deploy the resource. So, okay, customers are buying more and more storage. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, but the cloud conversation, how does that evolve for you? I mean, you're talking more private, hybrid. We heard yesterday that uh, the prediction was it's all going to be hybrid, which kind of makes sense. Yeah. How do you guys, what are the, some of the conversations like when you talk cloud with your customers? The conversations that we are having is either to talk about a storage cloud or to talk about storage in a compute cloud. Well, obviously, um, the compute cloud, that is uh, a significant investment that IBM is doing in terms of providing the infrastructure for cloud compute but from a specific storage perspective, um, this is the, the, the biggest discussion that we are having um, on storage uh, about a compute cloud. So how do you help us to virtualize the environment in a compute cloud? How do you uh, ensure that we are optimized with the server virtualization that we are doing? How do you match this with, the, with your storage um, value proposition, so to speak? And how do we ensure that we have an environment and an infrastructure that works seamlessly together? And this is where our, I think, uh, storage strategy comes into play when you talk about virtualization and all the things that we have had in the past and which mm -hmm. we have announced um, in the Edge conference this year. So the storage virtualization component, talk more about that. So you go in the compute cloud, a lot of this virtualization at the server level, it's happened, it's going great. Um, we've heard that there's an accelerated conversation around storage virtualization. How does that play into it for you guys? Um, well, I think the, this is one of the areas of strengths that we are having. If you think about our sand volume controller, that's basically was the first um, storage virtualization um, appliance in the industry which we invented or brought to the market in 2003. Since then we have continuously uh, invested in that area, brought more um, technological leadership into the market and into our solutions and we have integrated virtualization in all of our storage solution and devices. So uh, it, it plays very, it's very It's in nicely. your wheelhouse as they say. Now exactly. how, does, how does Flash fit into that conversation? Because obviously you're talking Flash into the infrastructure. Yeah. Well I think Flash is becoming more and more important uh, in terms of uh, making sure that you have the right I.O. and that you uh, also optimize your storage from a cost perspective. Um, what we are seeing is that with investments in, around, in an area of about 3% that you can drive three times the performance that you have on your entire storage subsystem. So Flash is becoming a very, very important um, component of the yeah. entire storage In the context of, of integrating Flash into a traditional storage system. Exactly. What about some of the new markets for, for Flash where I'm doing an all-Flash system or I'm doing a 
or or, or, I, or I'm putting you know flash very close. So you, actually, I think you you announced some we, capabilities to manage uh, solid state disk in the servers. Right? That is so, correct. Yeah, that's yeah. the ultra draw announcement that we have done here, where you have that exactly that capability that you can manage the flash in the server and then you're leveraging it across the various. Um, appliances and the various uh, installations that you are having and we are doing this also with the virtualization so it's not only the storage in in the in the uh, uh, in the rack that you have that but you can also virtualize the other storage that you have in the server or that you have in other parts of your environment so what's the uh, so for the for that solution where you're managing this the flash in the server what's the use case what's the uh, you know what's the customer drive for that one I think the customers are looking for higher IOPS and looking for higher performance on the entire system. And In this a is virtualized environment? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Okay, so starting starting to solve some of the problems of storage bottleneck in a virtualized environment. That is correct. So this is not really compute constraint. Yeah. Sebastian, my final question is we have the break for our next guest. Is okay. so going forward now, the momentum coming out of this conference, what do you see on the sales side relative to the customer environment? What's next? What, what's the big focus area for you guys right now? For sure, storage optimization. We continue to be on, on the path of helping our customers to optimize their storage environment. We have invested significant amount of money to help our customers to assess their storage environment. We have drawn a lot of conclusions out of this and best practices that we are providing to our customers in return and help them to optimize their environment, make it more efficient, make it more effective, and definitely drive innovation into their environment so that they um, certainly achieve their business goals. That's Sebastian Krauss, the VP of Global Storage Sales uh, here, day two for IBM's Edge 2012. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest.